Day Shift Ending Explained After Netflix cancelled their most recent vampire show, First Kill, we've got this brand new vampire action comedy movie which starred Jamie Foxx and Snoop Dogg. With a runtime just short of two hours, it was extremely digestible. With a twist at the end and a journey of a man wanting to get money to keep his family together in a world where different types of vampires roam the streets, I thought I'd jump into it and explain all that there was to take away from the movie. So let's get into it. Here is Day Shift Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. Day Shift is a movie that was centered around an individual named Bud Jablonski, who was a vampire hunter in LA, but his family were under the impression that he was a pool cleaner. We saw this in the opening scene of the movie, where it was the only time that he was carrying out this job in disguise. We saw that the job he was doing as a vampire hunter was the very reason as to why he wasn't living with his family and was the reason why it broke down, as they were not aware of what he was actually doing and the lies that were being uttered. In the opening scene, we saw a moment that would tie into the wider plot of the show and the main reason as to why the movie was happening. We saw Bud take out a vampire that was disguised as a 90-year-old woman and at the end of the movie, it was revealed to us that she was the daughter of Audrey, who was the main villain Audrey had the intention of building a housing estate that allowed all vampires to live together in one community and would be able to gradually take over the area. They were also developing a sunblock that would allow them to go out in the sun and be a threat during the day as well, seeing as though they already owned the night. Bud's intentions were that of good ones. He was hunting down the vampires as their fangs were a commodity that brought in money, and that was within the Union of Hunters a place where Bud had been banned from due to his off-the-cards behavior that went against everything that they stood for. However, thanks to Big John, a character played by Snoop Dogg, he was able to get onto the day shift, hence where the name of the movie came from. Bud wanted the money due to the fact that his wife was going to move away with his daughter to Florida as they needed more money. Bud then set off to raise $10,000 in order to get tuition for his daughter and to also get braces. We saw Bud paired up with Seth, an individual who worked in the union in more of an admin role. He was assigned to be with him due to the fact that he would keep an eye on Bud and make sure he was following procedure. This was where we got the stereotypical comic relief character, as he wasn't up to scratch with Jamie Foxx's Bud, and they were polar opposites. As the movie went on, we saw the pair grow closer as friends, and Seth became more against the union due to the justification of some of the actions that Bud was doing. All the time, whilst Bud was trying to raise the funds, Audrey had found out that the old lady at the start of the movie, her daughter, was killed by Bud, and she herself then set out on a mission to take out Bud as revenge for killing her daughter. In an attempt to do so, she arrived at his house, claimed Seth as a vampire, more specifically an uber vampire, which we know due to the fact that his head was separated from his body, but he was able to survive and put it back together. And then they kidnapped his family, where they planned on turning his daughter into a vampire, where she would then drink the blood of her mother and kill her father. We saw Bud team up with Seth and Heather, who were considered good vampires, and they approached the location of where Audrey's lair was. We saw them take out several vampires, but they were trapped into a corner. This was where we saw Big John come into the picture and wipe out everybody in his side and save the three of them. From here, the climax of the movie was about to begin. We saw Seth and Heather fighting Audrey's henchmen, and they were putting up a good fight, and they managed to defeat by ripping his arms off. Big John, in a sacrificial moment, sacrificed himself so that Bud would be able to make it to his family where they were being held captive. This then tied into the final twist at the end, but we'll get to that. Bud made it into the lair where Audrey was keeping his family and we saw a battle begin, where it looked as though he was going to lose and his daughter was going to get bitten. However, like we saw in the first part of the movie, he used his line, a way that never fails and works every time like we saw him say at the start, acting as the way of killing Audrey, and thus allowing his family to be free. It did feel a little bit anticlimactic in the sense that she was the most powerful of them all, but it felt as though there were many other battles in the movie that looked more difficult for Bud. After this, we witnessed them leave the venue after Sega, the boss of the union, tried to get Bud banned again, based on all of the disruptions to protocol that he carried out in the movie. We saw Seth, who was a by-the-book individual, now sticking up for Bud, and claiming that he was going to be on the field hunting vampires alongside him in the future. We also finished by seeing that Bud was going to get back with his ex-wife and daughter again, taking it one step at a time, and with no lying due to the fact that they now knew what he truly did as a job. 
The final shot that we saw was of some rattling on the ground, where we saw Big John climb out of the ground and walk off, showing that he survived the blast that was emitted in his act of destroying all of the vampires in his path. How did he survive? Well, that's something we don't really know. I'm putting it down to the fact that a lot of the weapons that they used aren't actually damaging to humans. For example, we saw something that emitted garlic and wood. Something that I imagine wouldn't do that much harm to humans, but it would do to vampires. So I'm guessing that it was something that caused him no harm at all, judging by the fact that it looked as though there was no damage on him. I thought this movie was okay. It was slightly better than I thought it was going to be, and there were elements beyond the toilet humour that did make me laugh at Ad. It didn't really follow the traditional lore when it came to vampires and vampire hunters, but it doesn't try to, so it manages to get away with it. The ante did feel quite inconsequential in the sense that Audrey's plan to take over the town and open up a new housing estate filled with vampires never really felt like it was going to go ahead. Nor did the development of the sunblock to allow vampires to go out in the day and also dominate the day as well as the night. It felt like more of a personal vendetta and a manhunt to seek revenge on the person who killed her daughter, and that was by taking away his own. We saw a full circle in the fact that the actions in the start of the movie were that of what we saw at the end, but it is most certainly a one-watch-and-done kind of movie. It's the sort of watch that I don't think would work if it were released in the cinema, but on Netflix, it's okay. The humour is okay for the most part, apart from the cheap toilet humour, as a lot of the time it comes from the way that Bud communicates with Seth. And they are the funniest parts in the movie. The action sequences, other than the car chase, that felt like it lacked something, and again, felt like it was never really going to do any lasting damage, they're quite good to watch. The way the vampires manoeuvre can be quite haunting, and it does often look as though an uphill battle, so they do a good job in getting that across the screen. I'd recommend watching it if you're up for an action comedy vampire adventure, but if you don't watch it, you're not missing out on much. So, there you have it, Day Shift Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, theories and predictions, and character breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you can find them all. If you want to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of Day Shift? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. <laughs>